All right, family, look. Right now, in my whole area, in like my zip code and a whole bunch of surrounding zip codes, the internet is down, okay? It's having trouble <laughs> in my area right now. So I'm going to record this introduction as well as the expression of rhyme portion of uh, this episode with this background instead of my logo in the background, which you can see right, right uh, there. There we go. I gotta practice like pointing to different places where I know things will be, stuff like that. Uh, anyway, <laughs> just wanted you to know that. Let's get into today's episode. Expressions of Hello again, and welcome back to the Expression of Love podcast. It is your host, Soul Expression Indeed, and I'm so happy that you are here with me. Today, I am speaking with Tina Marie J. She's a super cool New Yorker that I met on Instagram. When I saw her sharing her story on Instagram, I reached out to her immediately and said, wow, I really need to have you on the show. I want to give my audience... Um, a chance to to be exposed to you and to connect with you and to hear some of your story um, because she was caught up in a cult for seven whole years and she shares that uh, publicly on her YouTube channel and her Instagram and her TikTok pages and stuff like that so uh, uh, check it out Tina Marie J is a former Christian ex-religious cult member who started sharing her story in 2017. She helps others uh, struggling with adjusting to life outside of religion as well as those who are exiting a religious cult or toxic group of any kind through one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions and social media content. She says, my goal is to help bridge the gap between the Christian community and non-believers by bringing information, knowledge, and transparency to both sides. Uh, we talked about her story. We talked about some of the things that I believe and some of the ways that, like in, in how I also left the church in my own way in my late teens, early 20s, and how actually it's funny that the biblical... God, if you will, uh, is now starting to slowly but surely re-enter my life in some ways. Not the church, but the biblical God nonetheless. And, and spirituality. We talked a little bit about spirituality and what that means and uh, what it doesn't mean. So hopefully you guys really enjoy this episode. Make sure that you like and subscribe if you have not already. Leave a comment and check it out. Two, one. Hello, wide world, and welcome back to the Expression of Love podcast. It is your host, Soul Expression Indeed, and I am sitting here with Miss Tina Marie J. And we are going to talk about something that actually is is more common than sometimes we like to believe or we like to admit, uh, both as a society and as individuals. And uh, I'm not going to spoil what we're going to get into, but we should have a very, very, very interesting conversation. I hope you all enjoy it. Make sure to like and subscribe if you have not had the chance already. And please help me welcome Tina Marie J. What's happening? Say what's up to the peeps. Hey, how are you doing? Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here on your podcast. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. We're, we're definitely uh, glad to have you on. So I am very interested in your story because what, what I've seen on, on your Instagram, which is where, where we met, mm -hmm. is that it's, it seemed that you got, you got into something that looked really nice and then yes. turned out to be really not nice, like the opposite. Yeah. And 
um, I, I can tell, at least on the Instagram posts, you kind of shy away from certain levels of detail, maybe because you just, you don't want to tell too, uh, reveal too much just to the internet, or, or maybe because you don't want to accidentally start saying certain names of people and, and putting people on blast. I'm not sure, but it, it makes me curious because I'm like, dang, like what happened? You know, like what, not just what were the signs, but like what was the, what was the, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back? What tipped it from being a, a, a genuinely, maybe overly friendly experience to a, oh no, this is weird experience, you know? Yeah. And so um, mm -hmm. first, if you can give a little background on just who you are as a person, and then maybe just, we can start at the beginning of, of this story. Yeah, yeah. Um, wait, so did you find me on Instagram or did you find me on YouTube? I found you on Instagram. I, I subscribed to your YouTube afterwards. Okay, okay yeah, because my YouTube channel, I'm very transparent. Like I have videos, where I'm, I'm extreme. I don't say names because, you know, legal reasons and things like that, but I'm very transparent. Um, so my Instagram posts, uh, I'm just going to address that. I like, I guess I'll go a little more into this later, but I did go through a period in my life around uh, 2020 to 2022 where a lot had happened. And so um, I just, I stopped making videos for a while. And so when I started putting up more stuff on my Instagram, um, I share a little bit, but I don't put out too much, I guess, because I was still trying to figure out my own way navigating my way through this life because i'm going through a whole healing journey so uh, that yeah so it's like i'm just now starting to get back into talking about it again and helping people um but it also ties into the healing journey i took when i left the church i was in so um the church i was in when well, i well i'm sorry to cut in if you uh Tell the people like who you are in general. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry. And then, and then, yeah, and then I want to, yes, kind of. Yeah, I'm start. sorry. Um, yeah, because I'm. I think of myself as like a regular person. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm just Tina. So let me get to my story. <laughs> I'm, okay, so I'm Tina Marie J, and um, yes, I am a regular person, obviously, but I started my YouTube channel, my YouTube journey based off of my experience of coming out of a cult. So um, I was a part of a, a cult, a Christian cult for seven years. And um, it's called it's the I. Yeah, yeah, the International Churches of Christ. Like it was way too long because when you're in a cult, it's not the same as when you're just in a church. You know, it affects you different. So even seven years, that's a lot of having to reprogram after leaving. So I started my channel. Um, really, I just started it just trying to share like my experience, like, hey, I was in a cult and this is what happened. I didn't know I was going to get the feedback I got. And so originally I wasn't going to name the cult I was in. But then when I started getting feedback, I was like, you know what, I'm going to say the name because what if there's people who are in the same one and I can help a little further? I'm only speaking my truth. People are gonna hate me, people are gonna love me, but at the end of the day, it's my truth. So then that's how I got into the channel. And then from there, I got people from like, just all around the world who were like, oh, I was in that same church or I'm in that church now. And so they started asking a lot of the same questions. And then I just put two and two together and I'm like, this kind of became a thing without me trying to make it a thing. Wow. But it helped me heal and it helped me help other people. And so now I feel like it's important to have awareness about what a cult is, the difference between a cult and just a church. Awesome. Wow. That's that's bizarre. Yeah. I uh I may I may have heard you say seven years before, but hearing it now again, it's like, dang, that's man, that's like you're not even the same person from the beginning of a seven year period to the end. Like, you know, they don't even like, like schools and stuff, they'll ask you, what's your five year plan? And you were in this thing for seven years. That's, yeah, shoo. But yeah. I guess if it's so bright on the surface, mm -hmm. then yeah, you think, yeah, it's probably fine going deeper into this. But uh, mm -hmm. so, so yeah, so, so I interrupted you. So, you know, cause I oh. wanted to, to, no, I want to stay on right, track. You know, yeah. Um, so maybe what what year did did you um, did they 
invite you in? That was in the summer of 2009. Okay. That was my, but I met, I actually was introduced to the church in um, the winter of 2008 by my best friends. And I wasn't really feeling it because I was like, all right, it's cool. But people were a little too friendly for my taste. Like I need to get warmed up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so I wasn't really into it. But then in the summer of 2009, I ended up joining. Hmm. How did that go? It was very unintentional. I didn't want to join. It actually, um, I had just gotten married that June of 2009. And then my husband decided that he wanted to join the church. And we were attending another one, but it wasn't like any serious thing. You know, we just went whenever we wanted to go, but I wanted to make it more consistent. And then he was like, let's join this church instead. And so, you know, I wasn't down with it. I was like, if you want to join, you could go ahead, but I'm I'm going to just do my own thing because mm -hmm. I just, you know, that's just how I am. I'm, I feel like, especially when it comes to your personal beliefs, I don't believe in tagging along, you know, whether it's my partner, my friend, because if we're not having the same kind of beliefs, it doesn't make sense to do this because you do it. But I ended up doing it because of him. I ended up mm -hmm. joining because uh, I had someone tell me that if I didn't join, then my husband would cheat on me and find someone more spiritual. And that's how I ended up joining. I joined, I think, like that October of yeah. 2009. That's interesting that, because uh, yeah. I'm sure this was a friend that said something. So like, I, I, you know, like as a, I'm a husband now and I would feel very offended if my wife, if one of my wife's fr friends, right? And I don't mean any offense. Uh, if one of my wife says yeah. something like that about me, you know, but yeah Neither it here nor there. Fun, though. it was it was actually a guy who baptized him that said that it was one of the brothers in the church yeah in the in the cult in the wow i was in. well then that makes more sense okay i'm thinking this was like one of your one of your homies that oh, said no. that about your husband yeah oh hell no <laughs> <laughs> i was like what <laughs> No, no, it was a, it was a member of the church so I felt pressured like I had to become a member in order to keep my marriage because it was still new and I was young I was 23 when I got married yeah 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 you still married um yeah I am legally okay okay um yeah no that's like another story okay. another story leaving <laughs> that's another part of my journey but legally yeah, I am still no doubt. Um, I wanted to ask you too, because like, so I, I also grew up um, going to church, right? I, I, uh, I'm from the East Coast and uh, I was okay. AME, African Methodist Episcopal, um, but not by, you know, because my family was. And so yeah. like I, I grew up in a church, but I never experienced something like, like, like you have. And I'm also someone who left the church, but for very different reasons. I had no traumatic experiences with it. Um, but so I'm wondering, like how you how you maybe grew up uh, as a as a child, and like what your what your beliefs are that were given to you by your parents before you had your own at you know 23, 24. Um, well, I grew up in a Christian household, so my parents weren't together, but my dad was a pastor and uh, my mom was also a Christian. And so she met him at church. So I basically was brought into religion. Like I always tell people, I, I wasn't given a choice. You know, what do you believe is just straight from birth. I, you know, I had a bunch of children, Christians books. I had a bunch of Bibles. I like everything. So the belief that I had was everyone has to believe in God. Everyone has to believe in Jesus to get to heaven. And if you don't, you'll go to hell. Or if you're not a good person, meaning like, you know, to be a good person, you can't sin or you have to try your best not right. to sin. Else you'll go to hell. Mm -hmm. And so that was basically how I grew up believing. But as I became a teenager, I started to rebel a bit against those beliefs. Yeah. And we all, and we all have that that initial stage, we, we rebel against everything. I was, I rebelled against everything. I mean, we rebel against vegetables. We rebel, we rebel, <laughs> right? Like <laughs> teenagers are weird, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, so, yeah, so, so how did, how did this, you, you end up um, 
well, you know, first of all, the, the, the person that ends up baptizing your husband says this, this thing to you, you end up joining, what, um, what, what kind of follows? I'm sorry, say it again. What kind, what of, kind of follows that, that period of time? Um, well, after I, I did the studies, I did like about 10 studies and I got baptized fully in water. And then it's, I went through like the honeymoon stage period, which is like the first start of the cycle of a cult when you join. Um, by, by study, do you mean like Bible study? Bible studies. I had to do a series of 10 Bible studies. And then at the end of the 10th study, then the people that you're studying with, they have to decide if they feel that you're ready and well-equipped enough to be baptized. That's very interesting. Okay. It, so it sounds like surface, on the surface, it sounds good. Like they're vetting yeah. a good way, but it also sounds like a little much for just a belief system, but yeah. yeah. Okay. So you, so, so, so yeah, you had to go through a series of studies and then the, and then the, the peers, were they peers or were they like older? No, all the women that I had were older. I was okay. like one of the youngest women in the, well, no, there were other younger women in the church, but I was one of the youngest married women. So mm -hmm. anyone else in my age group wouldn't talk to me, hang with me, study with me. I had to only hang out with married women. So they were all older than me. That was a weird thing, but that's how they operate. It was weird. Like it was, it was one of those unspoken rules. So in the cult I was in, and in a lot of cults, there's unspoken rules. So it's these are the things that you start to realize when you start getting into the thick of it. You start realizing, like, wait a minute, this isn't really normal, you know. So why am I doing this? And right. you know, so it was just one of those things. So the women that I studied with, they were older than than me. So that was another advantage they had that made me think. Well, they're older, so I got I got kind of listen. Right, we under we uh, we believe older most of the time means wiser because sometimes it does. Exactly. Yeah, that, that makes so much sense. Wow. Yeah. So okay, so 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 the, and then they decided that yes, you were. That baptized. was right. Yeah, and then I get baptized. What well, and uh, just go ahead and kind of free flow, free flow okay. the story. So after I got baptized, um. It was, it was all right. It was cool. You know, I was, I was like excited to go to church and, and all of that. And I was, you know, like I, I got new friends in the church and they're older than me, but they're new friends. And then, um, I started dealing with anxiety. I've always, I've had anxiety for a long time. So I started having really bad anxiety and it was affecting me because my marriage was suffering. I was going through a lot in my relationship, I was living on my in-laws at the same time, so I wasn't getting along with them. And then I was going to school, and then I had my kids who were young at the time. So I had a lot of pressure, and I was like, this is not how my young adult life was supposed to be. I did everything completely backwards, and I started to have a lot of regrets, so I fell into depression. And then I went to a doctor, I got on medication, and <clears throat> during this whole time I tried to get help from the people in the church and they wouldn't help me and I just didn't feel like anyone would listen and I think that was when I started to realize like something's not right because if I'm here because we all have the same belief and we all believe in the same creator we all believe in God we're here to worship Jesus how come when I I pray and I ask God to help me that have to have someone who understands or can listen to me you know what I'm saying? Like, how come that doesn't work? So um, I would address any issues in my relationship or in my life and they would just blow it off. And it was like, oh, well, just pray about it or you're not praying enough. And then my anxiety became such an issue that they were blaming my anxiety. You know, they're blaming it's like, well, the reason why things aren't going right is because of you and your anxiety, because you must not be living up to God's standards. So now I'm trying to have my anxiety get like I'm trying to lower my anxiety I'm trying to get rid of my depression I'm on medication and I'm trying to get to this standard so I need to have my mental health up here in order for my spiritual health to be up here or else they won't see me up here I couldn't do certain things in the church because of the fact that I wasn't spiritually strong enough like because, like like what like for instance I wanted to um help serve so I wanted to work with the kids because like I've worked with kids for a long time in schools and kids with special needs I was like I want to work with the kids like as an assistant you know with the church or whatever and when one of the women were like sure you know speak to me next Sunday 
And so one of the leaders found out, one of the leaders that I spoke to a lot, she found out and then she told the person, no, tell Tina no, because she's not spiritually healthy enough. She's not up there spiritually. You need someone who's better off. And this woman gave me hell until I left. So, um, yeah, that was basically what happened. So my anxiety was what made me realize like something's not right because I wasn't happy. I was not happy right. at all. Yeah, and th- and then and then for you to to be in a situation where these people that you're supposed to be able to trust, right? Because that's what a community is is a it's a trust circle, right? A good community, any good community there's going to be a trust as its foundation. And these people that you're supposed to be able to trust are saying, you're the problem when when all of these pressures sort of hit, which, right, I mean, anybody that joins something new and then goes through a whole lot of changes or whatever and has children, pressure is going to come, anxiety is probably going to manifest because, <laughs> you know, that's that's normal. But yeah. But then you bring it to your church, to your church family, and they're like, "Oh, you should be better." That mm-hmm. is so unhealthy. It's like I feel for you. Like that is so not the way to go about that conversation. Um, okay, so so that's 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 huge. And 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 in in what in what way did you start to act on? Uh, oh, and then and then the whole yeah, like you're not being able to do things to like I guess take take up certain roles um, in the church because you're the problem stuff, right? You're you're not spiritual enough, and so it seems it seems like they're trying to make you want it, make you want that 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 intangible, unspoken achievement like I, once you want it bad enough then we'll probably let you get to certain levels and certain take on certain roles but you got to want it so bad that you become desperate for it and that's that sounds very cultist would you say that that's accurate all right good people you know what it is you know what it is it is time for the expression of rhyme that's right it's time for the best segment of my podcast where i take a moment to inject a rap verse into the episode that touches on one or more of the talking points that my guests and i are engaged in and i hope you really enjoy this um this verse for it's the most christian rap verse i've ever written because largely uh, this woman's story, um, as well as my own more and more these days, you know, touches Christianity. So I wanted to express and and do an artistic display that um, also incorporates some Christianity and Christian values in it. Um, and I think it turned out pretty good. Check it out. <clears throat> Look. The amount of times I went through this experience is zero. Spirited away like your hero. That's why I'm glad she's sharing her story, bringing awareness like a hero. Truly a blessing. Now she's letting people know what she know. And I'm praying they stop praying on young minds for profit. People should be arrested for stealing. It's out of pocket. Directly disobeying that third commandment by indoctrinating vulnerable people who need them claiming that God is who you stand with. Make it make sense. I'm losing bandwidth, trying to wrap my head around this blatant spiritual damage, taking all that you can with the guilt and fear you hand them. I hope you know the plan for your soul's landing is branded in the halls of hell. But all is well. We shall overcome. Some seek the hearts of many. I just need the soul of one. I'm proud to know myself, but even better, knowing father, going farther away from sin because he sent his only son. And I'm not even a Christian by traditional definition, just intentional inquisition of my purpose and my mission. I pray. And then I listen, wait, and spirit whispers a simple yet subtle minuscule principle I should live in. Then I get to fix in the imperfections within and give him thanks and praises for he has risen and driven me to new understanding. My vision is clear and vivid. The pivot from the insisted is finished. Hope I'm forgiven. And shout out to Tina for today's conversation. It inspired these lyrics I'm throwing into rotation. So pass your favorite line around like a blunt. Show them how we get down on the expression of love. You heard? Now, 
back to your regularly scheduled program. That's 100% accurate, and that's, that's exactly the point where you start losing yourself. And that's why when people do leave, they deal with so much psychological damage. Because basically, you're in a narcissistic relationship. Like, if you look up about, you know, cults and the leaders, most of the leaders of cults or all the leaders, they have some narcissism in them, or they have full-on narcissism. Right. And then, you know, the members carry on the traits, because when you're around a narcissist long enough, you eventually start to take on their traits. So you're not a narcissist, but you're taking it on. So, you know, that spills over and that completely messes with you psychologically. And that is what is a huge red flag that it is a cult. Right, right. How, how, um, how many years are we into the seven years? Like at this point where, let's say where, where you, 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 um, started talking about taking on other roles and they were like, no, not yet. How far are we into the story? Um, this was about, actually, this was, this was around like my fifth or sixth year. Okay. So we're pretty, okay. Around my sixth year. This is around my sixth year. Um, when they told me that I couldn't, I couldn't do anything because of my mental health. So mm. it was just something that was already happening, but it was getting worse because the thing is that I had switched to another church. I was in the same exact cult but they have a lot of different locations planted. Okay. So I have moved, I live in New York, so I moved from one borough to another. So I moved into the new one in the new borough. And I thought maybe it'll be different. Maybe it'll be better here. So by then I was in like my sixth year. And that's Man. why year seven, I was like, nah, I can't do this. I, got, I gotta go. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm glad you um, kept yourself. You talked about, you know, people out, people lose themselves in these situations because yeah. I can, you know, I can imagine. And it's, it's like, uh, well, well, what I'm, what I'm thinking about asking and, and I'm not, I'm not finding a, a really good transition, but I'm thinking about, I'm trying to get to where I can ask about like money because usually with cults, at least in America, money is very heavily involved with the members and with like how they, groom you to use you know a term um right. into what they want you to be uh mm -hmm. money isn't how how did how did how did it affect your wallet or your or your husband's wallet or however that played out yeah, that was a big thing um so we always had to give and then once a year we had to give a special missions contribution which was like around four hundred dollars and at the time we were living with his parents. Like we didn't, he got laid off from his job. I was a stay at home mom. He was doing little odd jobs here and there. Then I started going to school. So it wasn't like we had money to just be like, here you go, you know? So um, he usually was the one who gave contribution. And we always thought, well, we're married. So it's from the both of us. But then one of the women pulled me aside and was like, yeah, you need to give money because when you get to heaven, God's going to look at your husband and be like, come in, because he did all the works, but you didn't do anything. And I'm like, well, what the hell am I supposed to do? Because I don't, <laughs> I don't work, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really have money to give you guys. And it was a really tough time. It was just, you know, it's like, you don't have the money. You don't have the mental stability. It's, it's just, you're never enough, you know, in, yeah. in the cult. You never seem to be enough. Man, and it's like, well, I mean, what do you want me to do? I don't have the support, and y'all are supposed to be my support system now, you know. Yeah. Besides my family, y'all are supposed to be my second family. Where's the support? But I guess, I guess when you're in it, maybe sometimes those type of questions don't come because you just, and you you already explained there was so much pressure on you and 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 certain things. How how are you mentally nowadays? By the way, you you've been out for a while. Um, I'm just 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 curious side question question. Um, I'm being very because I'm very transparent. I'm I'm very I'm terrible right now mentally, but that's just because I'm grieving, you know. So like my mom passed away five months ago. My grandmother passed away March of 2021, and then my mom passed away March of 2022. So I didn't get to process enough. Um, so I'm, honestly, it, it comes in waves, but. I'm learning. I just, I just look at it as like, this is a part of my healing journey and I'm not going to feel this terrible forever. You know, eventually I'm going to get back up there, but 
it reminds me of how I felt when I left the church. I was going mm -hmm. through depression and I was grieving the church. And then when I left religion, I was grieving religion. So what helped me was sharing my story and helping other people. And that helped me heal a lot faster. And so like now I'm starting to do that mm -hmm. with my current journey. But um, gotcha. yeah, but I mean, um, when it comes, but it doesn't affect me when it comes to how I feel about like my spirituality or, you know, I don't, I'm yeah. not like fearful of like, oh, well, this is my karma because I left God. Cause I've had people say that to me. I don't think of it like that. I just, I just feel like I'm going through a human experience and this is, you know, we have our highs and our lows. I'm at my low, but this is going to build a character and it's going to teach me what I need to know to continue to help people. Right. And, and you can't leave God. <laughs> that's exactly. just stupid. Yeah. You can't, yeah, you can't I leave God. Like yeah. No, I think that's ridiculous. When people say that, I'm just like, all right, whatever. Yeah. I mean, just but how does that even come out of somebody's mouth? Did you, you, know, you left God, so that's your karma. That's your punishment. It's like, yeah. well, when did I? When did I come to God? Was I was was God not in my life before I joined mm -hmm. this thing? Was, right. was he, just, he was just not there? He was waiting. Like, <laughs> what, what are you talking about? I'm sorry yeah. to be so comical about it, but it's just oh, but it's true. Like when you start to think more logical, it's you can't help but to think like that. And that's when I realized that I wasn't a Christian anymore. Cause I started, I, after I left the cult, I had time to really like sit and reflect, like, what do I really believe in? Cause even when I was in there, there were things I didn't agree with, but I kept my mouth shut, you know, cause mm -hmm, you're not mm -hmm. allowed to say anything. Right. So, and then your peer group was older women, older yeah. women and who were, who were obviously probably deep in it, probably been in the thing yeah. for decades and stuff. So yeah. Um, yeah. all the way indoctrinated completely and, and you know what you know what it makes me think of too tina is there's always going to be a part of you that knows right from wrong mm -hmm. you know and so when you're taking these young you know 19 to 25 year old people women in particular but also just people and you're trying to implant these little nuggets of lies these little lies into their head you you know what you're doing even if you got got by the same monster there's a there's a part of you that knows right from wrong like mm -hmm. right like yeah and 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 they just they just do these things i mean you know we didn't i didn't bring you on here so we can complain about these people that that did this to you but no yeah um I get what let me saying. tell you a little bit about about me so because again, again, I I also ended up leaving the church, but it wasn't a it wasn't a situation like that. I personally left the church in my like conspiracy theory college days. So I went through a phase of, we'll say from about earliest, maybe about seventeen years old, till I was maybe twenty four, twenty five, where. It was just, it was just, you know, I was feeding myself a lot of YouTube. I was feeding myself uh, some books and things. And well, I mean, and obviously some conspiracy theories are proven true and, and a lot are not. So it's one of those things, but I just basically, I didn't want to allow, like I said, the image of a white Christ, uh, the idea that the stories in the King James version of the Bible happened exactly how they said it happened. Um, or m mainly the idea that there's a hell that's waiting for me because I masturbated to pornography or something like that to just be in my mind dictating my steps. And so I went full stop on church, the, you know, the church I grew up in, I, you know, wasn't interested in going anymore. I would still have conversations with the pastor because he was a cool dude, but well, we wouldn't talk. We would talk life stuff. We wouldn't talk theology, for instance. But um, yeah, this 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 whole this whole stage of my life was was um, entrenched in the idea that I have to find out what's really in here, right? What's really in in my heart? What really resonates with me in terms of if I want to set up a belief system for myself or if I want to not believe 
anything mm-hmm. to, to, to within reason, right? Not believe anything within reason. Still going by right and wrong, right from wrong, but and do no harm. But just like that's it. That's that's enough kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But it's funny because nowadays. Christ and really just the teachings of Christ does seem to be floating back in a little bit, but from the inside out, definitely mm-hmm. not from an external, like a, like an organization of any kind. Yeah. And, and I wonder about that, you know, I wonder because like, I, for instance, I pray more now than I ever did when I was forced to go to church, right? And by forced to go to church, it means I grew up in it. So I was forced. Right, because I'm not gonna say, I, I legally can't stay home as a as a young child by myself. Yeah. So, uh, so prayer. Um, I'm a meditation coach. Uh, oh. I'm a very spiritually led person, um, and stuff like that. And so I, I I'm starting to take certain lessons more seriously than than before when I I felt like they weren't my thoughts. They were somebody yeah. else's thoughts who were imposed on me. What do you? Like, what do, you, what do you think about stuff like that or stories like that? Like, people that yeah. leave for different reasons, but then but then maybe sort of come back and try to figure the whole thing out. I think we all have our own different journey. And um, I think that, like, sometimes, like, it's not always just black and white. You know, you may feel like, well, I don't really believe in organized religion, but I still believe in Christ. Or I don't believe in Christ, but I believe in God. Like, we have our own reasons why we may walk away from organized religion. And um, I think that it's good to explore, you know, why you walk away from the religion itself and explore what do you really, what do you feel like relates to you? Like what what really feels like home for you, you know? And um, for me, like I had to do the same because I didn't know like, okay, do I believe in God? Do I not? Do I believe in Jesus? Do I not? So I was like in that agnostic, not really sure kind of phase. But then after a while, I got into spirituality and then I started to feel like I was experiencing God in a different way. You know, Mm -hmm. like some people can just become straight atheists. But then me, it was like, no, it's hard for me to be an atheist just because of experiences I've had and just how I just feel and believe. So I think we all have our own way. But I think it is good and important that you explore, you know, without the pressure of someone else or like you said like an organization telling you this is what you have to believe because this is the only thing that's true because I can't just take your word and they'll say well it's the bible all right but who wrote that but who really wrote that you know where do they get this info like you don't have any solid proof then I can't go with that and I never knew this about myself until I explored and learned and realized all right I guess I'm one of those people that for something like this I need a little more evidence yeah you mentioned um, getting getting more into spirituality. Um, so 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 when you when you left, ha, ha, hmm, spell out how you left for me, and then what what led you into what whatever you're calling spirituality. Okay, so um, for me, I had there was an experience uh, that I have went through where there was someone in the church that was kicked out, and it was like. I've seen these different situations occur so many times I didn't speak on it because no one would raise their hand and say anything. But this was basically like the last straw for me. And um, I didn't agree with how anything was going. So I spoke to my discipling partner and she basically, that's basically a person who's supposed to like hold you accountable. And so I spoke to her and I told her, listen, I don't, yeah. I was like, I don't like how things are going around here. I noticed that, you know, people are treated a certain way and have to face certain punishments that I don't feel are are right. Like I don't find a justifiable reason to treat people this way. And so I said, I want to speak to the pastor and his wife. And if they can't try to change things then I have to go. And so basically she shut me down and she's just like, well, then I guess you're gonna have to leave because uh, the pastors, you know, those are our leaders. They're the ones leading us. We need to follow what they say because they get the messages from God and I'm just like well that doesn't make sense to me that sounds like bull so I left and that was how I ended up leaving um after I what was the other question I'm sorry you want me to Uh, say how I left yeah just going into you uh oh my spirituality yeah 
so after I left, I originally wanted to try to find a new church, but I didn't feel comfortable. Then I realized I actually dealt with PTSD. I would get anxiety when I would go into a church or pass one. So I said, okay, I'm just not going to go to any church. So for a good year, I didn't go to church. Mm -hmm. And during that year, I started to self-reflect. Um, a friend of mine, she is, I'm very close to her, but she's very spiritual. She has psychic abilities. Um, you know, she's into crystals and all that. And she was like, you know, Tina, I want you to read this book, The Laws of Attraction. And that was my entry. Oh, the secret. Yes. So I read the whole book. I watched the documentary and I was like, this, this don't make no sense. But I had a friend a year prior who would talk to me about those things and I would okay. make fun of them. So it was introduced to me a little beforehand. And I just was like, it's not religion. It's, it's, it's sin. I got to shut it out. So now I got to really like be to myself, like, who's going to call me and tell me you can't read this. Who's going to call me and say, Tina, that's a sin. You need to pray. No one knows. So let me learn something that before I would have been too afraid to try and learn. So I got into the laws of attraction. And then from there, I started noticing certain things in my life kind of happening like the universe was working and I was just like this is not supposed to be happening because I left church like I left God I'm a sinner because at the time I still kind of had a Christian mentality okay. so I'm like things are supposed to be going horrible right now but then from there the more I got into it the more I started to learn about myself and then I just went through this like awakening where I was like oh crap like everything is is not what I thought like I started to awaken to all these different things. I was like going out all of a sudden I love nature. All of a sudden I started to enjoy spending time by myself. You know, it was just like a lot of things that started to change. And then I started to feel like I connect with God in a way I've never connected with God. Cause this, this is a different type of connection. And that was how it led into me feeling like I'm more spiritually based, not, not religious. Right. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, especially, you know, like the nature and the uh, synchronicities, if you will. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, once you, I mean, like some of it gets a little silly, right? Sometimes, like, let's say, you know, seeing repeating numbers and stuff like that. There is, for some people, significance for that. But does it mean every absolutely everybody who sees right eleven eleven twice in the same day that that is something? Of course not, right? That's, yeah. But um, but God, Source, Spirit, whatever, does have a way of communicating with the individual in the most beautiful, the most like subtle yet so obvious kind of way but also in a way that you cannot put into word. Like there's no way you could explain because it's like everything in my whole life prepared me for seeing this thing and knowing that yeah. it's, it's trying to speak to me, right. you know? And that's the best I can do with trying to put that into words, but synchronicities and, and um, spiritual insights or messaging and stuff like that, they, it really does come and it's sometimes it comes, you might look at a tree and it'll be that, moment in time that's like okay yeah. i'm here I'm, I'm listening you know I yeah don't know exactly what you're saying because it's not words but i'm, I'm here you know mm -hmm. yeah um, sp spirituality were you gonna say anything um no 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 i that was the perfect way that you put it that's exactly how it how it is yeah um sp spirituality to me is is about like awareness um, there's self-awareness, there's awareness of the world, and there's awareness that is more pure, that doesn't focus on anything, like you, like a camera focus, doesn't focus on anything. Um, and it, it's just aware, it's just um, sort of accepting and allowing and, and tolerant and open, you know? And, and that, that's, what, that's what spirituality, like spiritual rituals that make you more closed-minded is not spirituality. You know, stuff that makes you more intolerant, that makes you say, like some people get into spirituality and they say, um, the more heavily I got into spirituality, the more I realized that I had to cut everybody off. 
It's like, mm, I don't know if that's spirituality. That may more so be anxiety, for instance, or, or something else. Mm -hmm. Because spirituality, spiritual is about connection. It's not, you know, uh, it's, it's not separation. It's the other, it's the other way, the other direction. And mm -hmm. I mean, cutting off, you know, a person is, 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 is something, but when you, you know, when you say, you know, and it made me realize I had to cut everybody off. It's like, mm. most people are not evil, you know, trying to do you wrong. And you may just be taking a whole lot of little things way too personally and stuff like that is how I feel about when people say things like that. Yeah. Because spirituality is, is open and it, and it brings in, uh, and it's peaceful, right? It's not, it's not hard and rigid. It's smooth and it's peaceful and it's tranquil and, and yeah. sweet. So, um, my little tangent there, you know. No, you're good. Oh, yeah, I, hear, I like to hear different perspectives because I already talk a lot. So I like to hear other people's thoughts and how they view things. It, it gives you a different perspective, a different way, because I never looked at it like that. So I think that that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but I'm sure you've heard that language before, though. I, the more I oh, got yeah. into spirituality, I had to cut everybody off. I had to yeah. cut family members off. I had to uh -huh. like, slow down, slow down. Yeah. A, little bit. a lot I'm of not people sure that that's really spiritual. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, yeah, I was gonna say like a lot of people, a lot of people tend to cut people off. I mean, I had, I didn't have a whole lot of people to cut off anyway. But um, I cut off just a couple of people, but that's just because they were just toxic friends. They were people that weren't willing to understand I was on a different journey and respect it. You know, they wanted to mock it and like, oh, you're never going to do this. You're never going to do that. Yeah. You know, I was like, all right. So, you know, like, I guess peace. Like, right. we can't be friends no more. That's different. But I agree 100%. Like, you do have to make connections, you know. And yeah. I feel like that was also what helped me with my channel was the fact that I was connecting with all these different people. And I was being more open-minded opposed to when I was a Christian and it was like, oh, well, this person hasn't found God yet. You know, I'm invalidating their experience or their feelings, you know, using a uh, excuse of this person just doesn't pray or believe. Now yeah. I'm like, no, I'm open no matter what you believe or don't believe in. You could say, I don't believe in anything. I'm, I could connect with anybody now. And it's through the spirituality. Like that's hundred percent true. How do you think people find a good balance between being true to their belief, like sort of being true to themselves and being open-minded. How do I think people will find a good balance between? Yeah. How do you think, true. how do you think people should, should, should sort of orient themselves when, when they're trying, because you could be too open, you know, you could be naive in being open. Yeah. That's, that's probably how you got caught up in your situation in the first place, a little naivety, a little young, Youngness, right? Oh, yeah. Um, a lot, yeah. You didn't have the experience yet. And they prayed on that, but it's, you know, it's still a part of the truth. But mm -hmm. so there's open minded that's too open, and then there's clo um, sticking to your belief that's too closed. How do you think people find yeah. it? I think that you have to have like a, a healthy balance. Like you have to, what I tend to do is I know how I feel, I know what I believe and what I don't believe. But then when it comes to other people, it's like, I'm willing to hear you, you know, but that doesn't mean I have to take it on. Whereas before I would think or feel or believe something and someone else will be older, someone will probably be more experienced. All they got to do is keep talking and running their mouth. And now I'm like, okay, maybe I'll, I'll listen to you. Now it's like, no, you know, if I'm wrong, I'll learn that for myself, but that this is my journey. It's, I'm not. I don't need to be guided every step of the way. So I feel like it's important to have that balance, but to also be open-minded enough to be like, well, you know, if something sticks out that this other person said to me, what do I think or feel about it? You know, like it's okay to explore that without feeling the pressure of, I have to follow what everyone else believes or I have to follow what everyone else says because it's just, I, I can't be the only one to think this way. I have to follow them. It's all about the balance. And, and boundaries too. I think it's important to have really healthy boundaries. And especially yeah. when you're communicating with so many people, you're 
intertwining with so many different energies, you have to have boundaries. Word. Word. Good answer. Thank you for that. For sure. Well, um, and thank you for so much for sharing your story. I feel like a lot of people need to definitely hear this, and I'm glad that you have dedicated, you know, probably a large portion of your life to telling your story. Um, I'll definitely have to go and, and check out more of your YouTube. I'm, I guess I'm more familiar with your Instagram posts, but I'll see what you're talking about with the full transparency on your channel. Your channel will be linked in the description. Make sure y'all go like and subscribe her stuff. Um, it would not be the Expression of Love podcast if I did not ask you. And it's a loaded question, so take your time. What is love to you at this stage of your life? To me, love at this stage of my life is um, expressing what you have within, what you want other people to give. So if you want respect, if you want you know, kindness, compassion, you have to give that. You can't just demand it, but not be willing to give it. So for me, it's just also gratitude, being completely grateful. You know, I've suffered several losses and we all have, especially with the recent pandemic. And it kind of really makes you more grateful for what you have, being happy with where you are and grateful for it. And to me, that's like another expression of love, you know, just putting out compassion, loving kindness, and just like peace. Like, I know there are people who are like, oh, that's so cliche, the peace unity, but no, we need that. You know, we need more of that. And like, why would we not want more of that? So I think that to me, that's what love is, you know, it's a selfless act and it's, and it's, it's a way of expressing and being able to be vulnerable and to just put yourself aside for a moment to love other people because you never know what people are going through. And by the way, I'm glad you found me on Instagram because I just started putting up more recent posts so that I could, you know, get back into the swing of things. And because I, I still have been getting DMs, which makes me feel like I should be out there helping people, you know, so I'm glad that you actually found me that way. So thank you. Yeah. Do you, do you have more of a following on YouTube than, than Instagram or? More? Um, yeah, yeah, I do. I mean, I don't have a ginormous following, but yeah, I do. Like my earlier YouTube videos, I had a lot more views because I, were, I was like back to back putting out right. content about cults, but sometimes you need a break from that. So, okay. and it was never about the views to me. It was just like, oh ah, yeah, yeah. Person. No, this was service. This was like, look, yeah. you know, uh, I know I'm not the only one. Yeah. And I know how much this hurts. Like I know how I don't want this for nobody else. Exactly. Like that's um, the most to me. Yeah. I want to take a second to just say that um, I, I I want to share some gratitude with you for what you do, and I want to say that you are are very not brave. It's Courageous. You are very courageous for in the midst of your pain. Because I asked you how you're doing. You said terrible. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I know you mean off and on. I, I know you don't mean like right now in this moment, I feel terrible. But but I know you wouldn't you, like you wouldn't say that if there wasn't something true about it. And so uh, I feel for you. I'm proud of you. And, and I thank you for sharing and, and trying to trying to do good despite feeling bad sometimes mm -hmm. um because we need that we as a human a whole human race from the narcissist to the good people we all need what you're doing and thank you for that that means a ton to me that really does so thank you very much for that yeah um send some prayers up for you know tina's mom and and just the whole the whole world and and hopefully um we can get through this together as a, as a human family thank you so much for coming through the expression of love podcast um i'd love to have you back for more conversations and perspective sharing you know as, as our channels and platforms grow um where can people find you and like you know spell out your your stuff for people to find you and we will have the links in the description Okay, so on Instagram, it's Tina, T-I-N-A, Marie, M-A-R-I-E, underscore J. 
And then um, on YouTube, it's just Tina Marie J. Wonderful. Thank you for coming through. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed this conversation. Expressions of love.